In this video, I'm going to take a look at the Mill Street Bistro, a restaurant that was featured in Season 5, Episodes 11 and 12 of Kitchen Nightmares. We're going to take a look at what happened in the episode, and whether the restaurant managed to stay open afterwards. This episode is definitely in the running for the most amount of screaming. A clip from this episode actually made it into the show's opening in Season 5. It's that clip where Gordon and that guy are screaming, wake up, at each other. The owner of the restaurant is Joe Nagy, and in the before segment that they always do, we learn that Joe thinks very highly of himself and his food. Some of his memorable quotes were, Our food is the best by far. No one's ever done this. I was trained and worked for many old school chefs that were Europeans. The food here is exceptional. It's fresh, sustainable, and local. We really are from farm to fork. That's why our food is the best by far. The staff refutes pretty much all of his claims about his food being fresh and really good. One staff member said, What he tells us every day is that he is the best f***ing restaurant from New York to LA. Really, we are mediocre at best. The only other chef in the kitchen besides Joe said, He's always playing up the quality of the food, and I know that most of our stuff is frozen. We also learned that Joe is a complete asshole to his staff. The servers describe Joe by saying, When I think about Joe, I think of an arrogant, selfish jerk. And he makes it very unbearable to even be here. There's also a shot of the servers reading some comment cards left by customers. And the cards say, The owner was very condescending. And the owner was rude. So it looks like Joe's attitude isn't just reserved for employees. We see one of his servers confront Joe about his mistreatment of her. And she says, The way you treat me is disrespectful, crude, degrading. And his response to her is, Then you need to find another place to work. Gordon arrives not at the restaurant, but at Joe's farm because Joe wants to show off all his animals to Gordon. He shows Gordon his livestock and goes on and on about how fresh everything is and his cooking abilities. He tells Gordon, This is all the things I've learned in Europe, in New York, in the places I've worked and as a tableside culinary chef. I am self-taught by old school Europeans, master chefs that had a liking to me because of my passion. Besides the fact that that statement is a contradiction because it's not possible to be self-taught by someone else, what the hell is an old school European? Is this one? Is that one? Gordon also asks Joe what he thinks is the problem with the restaurant, and Joe says the problem is that they need more axes in seats, which is basically like saying that they're losing money because they're losing money. But eventually Gordon heads over to the restaurant to try the actual food. At this point, I'm a little bit confused because all the employees are basically saying that the food is not fresh and it's trash. But Joe, even though he's an arrogant jerk, does have a farm with actual animals on it, apparently. So I don't know why the food wouldn't be fresh, but this is Kitchen Nightmares we're talking about. The restaurant's dining room is surprisingly clean and nice looking inside. Gordon asks the waiter serving him about Joe and says, And he's trained with some of the best chefs in Europe? And the waiter responds, I have heard that story, yes. But to no one's surprise, Gordon is not impressed by the food. He orders some vegetarian ravioli, and when he squeezes one with his fork, this comes out. Ah, oh, he ate it! Why? And he also tries Joe's elk quesadilla and elk medallion, both of which he doesn't like. And to make matters worse, it turns out the prices they're asking for are too high for the locals. Several of the waiters say that Joe has a kind of stuck-up, uppity attitude towards the locals, and he won't try to cater towards what they want. And while Gordon is trying the food and critiquing it, his complaints make their way back to Joe, who decides that it's just unacceptable for Gordon to find anything wrong with it. When Joe hears Gordon's complaints about the elk medallion being too chewy, he says, He's dead wrong. That's aged elk. Elk is gonna have a bite, it's gonna have a chew. It's characteristic of it. It's never gonna change. That is a tender piece of elk. Chef Ramsay does not know the bite of an elk, and I would like to go to his restaurant where he has elk. What I'm trying to accomplish is from farm to fort. This is how these items eat. I was surprised that he didn't get that. I'm gonna challenge him. I'm gonna say, you know what? At my expense, I'm gonna go to your fucking restaurant and you make me elk and you show me how to make it. So he goes over to Gordon who's still eating and starts arguing with him and offering to remake the dishes in a really condescending way. But Gordon is just like, no, I'm good. Let's just get through the rest of the dishes. Joe just keeps going on and on about how he's not intimidated and how he's cooked all around the world and how he knows all these chefs. And then Joe gets really butthurt when Gordon complains about some micro carrots on his plate and tries to hand them back to him. Joe starts going on a long ass rant about how disrespected he was, saying, I have staff here that'll take care of that. You don't hand me raw food in my dining room. We don't need him to bust our balls over if there's little petite carrots that go there. Those same carrots go to the White House. Those same carrots go to the Five Seasons. They go global, okay? Who would care if a fucking garnish, micro garnish carrot was on as a garnish? He's gonna hand the owner the little petite carrots? He's in the wrong place. 
and he pulls out all the usual excuses like Gordon doesn't know about X type of food, that's how it's supposed to be, it's super fresh. But the final straw is when Gordon finishes with Joe's dishes and leaves to go get something to eat at a different restaurant. When Joe hears about Gordon leaving, he says, I wonder where he's gonna go get something to eat that's so great. He's gonna leave and go get something to eat. Good luck, go find something better. After all of that is the part of the show where Gordon gets the staff and owners together to give his critique of the food. Right away, Joe starts getting in Gordon's face and acting indignant at the fact that Gordon would disrespect such a prestigious and important person such as himself. You know, with a failing restaurant in Ohio. Gordon asks Joe what his thoughts were on the lunch he served and he responds, My thoughts on your lunch? I've never had anybody in my career critique my items that told me every one of them was a piece of shit and they had to go down the street to eat. That was uncalled for. Gordon responds by saying, I wasn't impressed with anything. I didn't take second or third mouth from any dish. They go back and forth for quite a while and Gordon seems to lose his shit more and more as the conversation drags on. Joe argues pretty much every single point that Gordon brings up and eventually he gives up trying to argue with Joe and leaves. After Gordon is out the door, Joe says, I know more about fucking elk and buffalo and beef than he'll ever know. Then he goes back inside and says to his staff, well, he just slammed my restaurant like it's never been. He does not know what I know about lake fish. He does not know what I know about buffalo. And I'm supposed to take this that my food is garbage and I'm a fraud? I don't give a shit what he says. The staff sits there looking bored as hell at having to hear Joe's delusional speech. And by the way, the whole time Joe is getting chewed out by Gordon, they were laughing and cheering Gordon on. When the staff doesn't vehemently agree with Joe's ridiculous claims, he gets mad at them and says, speak up. I think every one of you, you need to get your shit together. That's what this is about. But while Joe was ranting, some customers had come in and were standing right around the corner where they could hear the entire rant. Right about when Joe was saying, you need to get your shit together. One of the customers finally leaned over and said, you got customers out here. And on some really phony shit, Joe awkwardly leans around the corner, notices the customer standing there, and then turns back to his employees and says, so I appreciate what you're doing. I honestly appreciate each and every one of you what you're doing. Come on, man. But next, it's time for the dinner service. To no one's surprise, Joe runs his kitchen with an iron fist. He doesn't want anyone to say anything, and if anyone comes back into the kitchen or questions him, they get yelled at. Several dishes end up coming back into the kitchen, and when Gordon starts being critical again, Joe throws a full-on temper tantrum. At the same time, a former employee meets with Gordon outside the restaurant and says that not only was the fish frozen, but so was all the meat that was supposedly coming from Joe's farm. And she shows some pictures of store-bought meat to back up her claim. But how? I mean, we saw the animals. He clearly could make it farm the table if he wanted to. Why does he even have the farm then? Is it just a prop? Actually, do we even know if it's his farm? Maybe he just stuck that sign in some random person's farm just for the show. Gordon then goes back inside and finds all the frozen fish and meat stuck in a freezer, some of it with no dates on it. Gordon goes to confront Joe about the frozen food that he found, but Joe just refuses to admit that his food isn't fresh, and Gordon starts getting really pissed off. He tells Joe, I'm struggling here to stay in this building right now, I swear to God. And he looks legitimately pissed, but Joe just keeps being a delusional a Gordon and Joe keep arguing through the whole dinner service. One of the funniest parts is when Joe tries to put raw onions in a French onion soup because Gordon had complained about it when he tried it earlier. Gordon goes into full Hell's Kitchen mode and screams, I'm not here to show an idiot you can't put fucking raw onions in an onion soup. I can't teach you that. That's called common sense. That in your tiny mind is not common. Finally, Gordon seems to have had enough and he asks Joe if he wants him to leave. Joe says he doesn't want him to leave but continues the argument. They argue and yell back and forth some more but eventually they seem to come to at least some kind of an understanding. And next is a regularly done segment on the show where Gordon gets all the staff together and asks them to tell him their complaints about their boss. But what he doesn't tell them is that Joe is watching from a remote camera and he can hear everything they're saying. The staff goes on for a long time explaining what we've already seen a lot of. One employee said, He needs to control his temper. He was cussing at me right here in front of the door and then dragged me into the kitchen and started screaming at me even louder. So I might as well have been sitting right out here. And I mean, everybody witnessed it and my table was so disgusted they just wanted their check to leave. And they left me a note, you know, telling me to keep my chin up and that I did a great job and everything I was supposed to do. And I had left that note to Joe and he would tell me, Don't let that get to your head when people tell you you're doing great because there's always mistakes being made. It was to the point where I ended up having to go into the back because I started 
started crying. Just when I thought Joe couldn't get any more likable. This segment went on for so long that they had to time lapse it. And not a single nice thing was said about Joe. Pretty much every employee had something bad to say about him. And then Gordon reveals that Joe was watching the whole time and Joe comes out to talk to them. He starts out sounding a little apologetic but then immediately shifts the blame back to his employees. He says, we got a lot of work. A lot of things need to change. And if that means that I need to change and you need to change and we all need to change, we're going to do it. And the staff doesn't think he's sincere at all in his apology. But next, Gordon comes up with some specials to serve at the next dinner service. And while Joe is still feeding Gordon some excuses, he seems to be mostly on board with the changes. But the dinner service does not go smoothly. Everyone starts getting confused about orders, and Joe gets pissed about Gordon's criticisms and starts talking trash, which really pisses off Gordon. And the two get into another shouting match. This is where that clip from the intro came from, by the way. Gordon gets so pissed off that he tells Joe to f*** off out of his kitchen, and as Joe is walking out, Gordon takes an elk quesadilla off the grill and hurls it at Joe while screaming, and take that sh with you. Joe awkwardly saunters out of his kitchen, and Gordon pretty much takes over. Joe, with nothing else to do, shambles around the dining room and starts complaining to the random guests about Gordon, and they look really uncomfortable. Like, it's not even a conversation, Joe's just talking shit, and they're just sitting there like, Oh, is that right? Who are you again? And there's also a cutaway where Joe says, Chef Ramsay doesn't have the balls, the power, or the authority to kick me out of my kitchen. You would have to roll your tape back, because he didn't kick me out of my kitchen, I walked out. The editors apparently have a sense of humor because immediately after he says that, they play back the clip of Gordon telling him to fuck off and throwing an elk quesadilla at him while he awkwardly walks out of the kitchen. After the service is over, Gordon sits down with Joe and tells him that he needs to stay out of the kitchen because he's causing too many problems. And Joe seems to accept, even though he doesn't seem willing to admit that he's the one at fault. And now it's time for the restaurant redesign part of the episode. Gordon reveals a brand new menu and he brings in Chef Ed Sheeran over here to help lead the kitchen since Joe won't be in there anymore. Everyone including Joe seems to be happy with the new changes. The relaunch service goes mostly well with Ed Sheeran running the kitchen and only a few mistakes made by Joe who was working as a server. To his credit, he did seem to be being a lot more nice to his staff than normal. And finally, Gordon gives the usual end of episode pep talk and tells Joe, don't under any circumstances go back in the kitchen. The narrator tells us that after filming the episode, Joe kept the majority of Gordon's menu changes and business is steady. But there were some staffing changes. Over half of the staff from the episode are no longer working there. There's no indication from the show as to whether they resigned or they were fired, but either way, that's not a good sign. And Joe's back in the kitchen. Come on, man, you had one job. So what happened to Joe and Mill Street Bistro? Are they still open today? Let's start with the fate of the restaurant itself. The episode of Kitchen Nightmares aired in March of 2013, and according to realitytvrevisited.com, the episode was filmed in July of 2012, but I wasn't able to independently verify that. Surprisingly though, Joe somehow managed to keep the restaurant open until 2015, According to these articles from mirror.co.uk and the Gazette Review, Joe decided either in January of 2014 or December of 2013 to relaunch the restaurant with a different name. For some reason, they disagree on the date slightly. But presumably he did this to get a new start and maybe leave behind some of the ill will that a lot of people have since seeing him on TV. And to mark that momentous occasion and get off on the right foot, Joe decided to sue Gordon Ramsay and Kitchen Nightmares for damaging his restaurant and stealing equipment. According to that Mirror article, Mr. Nagy claimed Ramsey's crew left after filming the final post-makeover scenes, leaving damage caused by installing wiring and lighting fixtures into ceiling panels. He also told police a 150-pound Rondu cooking pot disappeared, along with a plastic tub which contained several elk steaks or chops. This was literally right at the same time as his restaurant relaunch. I assume it was probably a publicity stunt to get people talking about him, but isn't there a way to do that that doesn't make you look like a total jackass? Just from doing research and seeing what people were saying on social media, there was a lot of vitriol toward Joe. And I have to say, it's pretty understandable based on how he came across in the episode. He was a total dick to his employees, his customers, and Gordon. I guess, unfortunately, the suit was settled when the producers agreed to pay Joe 900 pounds, which is like $1,200. I would assume that it was just cheaper to pay him than to go to court, but who knows. So how did Joe's relaunch in 2014 go, besides the lawsuit? Well, he ended up renaming the restaurant to Maple City Tavern. 
but I think we can assume it didn't go super well because he ended up closing the restaurant in 2015, and according to this Gazette Review article, the building was eventually sold to someone else. If we look at Google Maps images from 2016, we can see that the restaurant looks totally out of business. The sign that used to sit right there is gone, and the parking lot is totally empty. Those cars right there are in the neighboring parking lot. Today, the building has a restaurant in it called Press Box, which is a sports bar and steakhouse. If we look at some of the pictures they have posted on Google, we can see the interior here is pretty much the same as when the show was filmed. Here we can see that weird bar thing in the center, and this post with these wood pieces on it, or whatever that is. And here's the podium from this shot here. So now let's take a look at some Yelp reviews to see what the food was like before they shut down. I was only able to find a Yelp page for Maple City Tavern and not Mill Street Bistro, but I think this may have been the same page and they just changed the name on it later. There's only 17 reviews and they have one and a half stars. Yikes. Several of these are pretty recent and I get the impression they were posted more out of spite than a genuine critique of the food. Only one of them was even from Ohio. One person asked, was this place on Kitchen Nightmares as Milk Street Bistro? Also, if so, why did it close? And someone answered, it was indeed the Mill Street Bistro. The narcissist owner Joe was a delusional sack of manure that quite literally cannot utter even one syllable without A, degrading his staff, B, degrading his customers, C, fabricating self-worth from thin air. I wasn't kidding when I said there was a lot of vitriol towards Joe Nagy, but let's see what people thought about the actual food. One reviewer from Sandusky, Ohio in 2014 gave it two stars and said, Try the tavern for dinner. Very small menu. Very small hamburger that was overcooked, as were the french fries. Very disappointing. Won't return. Another user from 2015 gave it one star and wrote, Place is terrible. Prices are insane for the food being bad. Joe didn't keep Ramsey's touch and went back to his old ways. A name change won't change good food. There were only two five-star reviews for the restaurant on Yelp. The first is from 2014 and it says, Pub style atmosphere and a great place to belly up to the bar or grab a table for good food. Comedy and open mic nights add for fun and diversity. Definitely a place you can be a regular at and want to stop by for one and visit friends. Staff are very accommodating. The second five star review is from 2019, but the writer either didn't understand the rating system or just gave it five stars because they were already closed because he wrote, ordered a burger here and when squirting condiments on it, noticed the mustard was in the ketchup bottle and the ketchup in the mustard bottle. I commented to the waitress later about it and we both had a short laugh about it. The owner, Joe, overheard and came to reprimand her for ruining his restaurant by laughing with me. I stuck up for her and shared the joke with him too about the condiments being in the wrong bottles. He smirked at me and told me I just didn't know anything about condiments and then bragged to me for an hour about how his condiments come fresh frozen or something like that. So I guess those explain pretty well why they went out of business. It sounds like most people thought the food was genuinely bad and not worth the high prices Joe was asking for it. So what has everyone's favorite old school European tot chef been up to these days? Well, the first thing I came across is this, the Joe Nagy's Bistro Facebook page. Now, I'm almost positive that this is a fake account created by someone to troll Joe because the posts are just too ridiculous. Their most recent post from August of this year is a picture of some crackers with American cheese on them. And the caption reads, new dish, $27. Get it fast, we're selling out. And there's a bunch of other similar posts like that. Here's a picture of some beans and three eggs. And it says, hi guys. Here it is, our new recipe. I've been working on the balance of this dish for months. I think I finally nailed it. The three ingredients work amazingly well. Only $17.99 at Nagy's Bistro. And then there's a bunch of posts of random people who he claims are his family and friends. Like this one, he says it's from his friend Bob's wedding, but isn't that Nicolas Cage? And he just posted a picture of that British actor from the HBO Chernobyl series a while back with no caption or anything. What the hell? And some of them are bashing Gordon Ramsay like this one that just says, old cunt. But like I said, I'm pretty sure this is a troll account. I also found what looks like an old online resume of Joe's on this Rocket Reach website. Here we can see it says his previous work experience was industrial food and beverage at Tetra, senior project manager at Maple Leaf Foods, and instrumentation at Campbell Soup Company. In the beginning of the episode, he had mentioned to Gordon that his previous job was in food sales or something like that. As far as his current whereabouts, he was last spotted by a Redditor with the username Real Estate Novelist, who said he saw Joe at a food festival three years ago in December, which would put the date around December 2018, I think. 
He also said the elk burgers were fire. I'm assuming Joe was like a food vendor or something at this festival. I decided to try and reach out to the original poster to try and get some more details about meeting Joe, and thankfully he was nice enough to answer my questions and give some more info on what happened. He had some pretty interesting things to say about his encounter with Joe Nagy. Now it was in, it was a food festival, I believe it was December of 2018. I'm in sort of the Tampa area of Florida. It was in a little, tiny little festival, a kind of nobody really showed up to in uh, Lando Lakes, uh, sort of by the, the high school here, Lando Lakes High School. There's some sort of rinky-dink festival. Probably, man, may have been a hundred people there. And I, I really, I don't remember what exactly the festival was, um, but I remember we're at this festival where I'm promoting my own business there, uh, family business, and um, we see that this guy is, um, he's probably two booths down from us has his own uh, trailer and he's doing elk and you know i was like ah that's cool i, I you know, didn't think anything about it and then um as you know people are just walking around talking to each other promoting their own things this guy comes over and starts talking to my dad who's with me and um he's talking to him and i'm looking at my brother and we're big kitchen nightmares fans and uh, <laughs> we're both looking at each other like is that you know, without even saying any words, just like, is that who we think it is? And I was like, hey, man, sorry to interrupt you, but um, are you Joe Nagy? He's like, yes, I am. And um, I think the first thing I asked him was just uh, if he's still keeping up with, because um, I saw he had he was doing elk stuff there, if he was still doing elk quesadillas, just because that's kind of a meme from the show. You know, Gordon hated the elk quesadillas <laughs> that Joe was doing. And he said he wasn't doing them, but he said he was doing, uh, like, elk burgers and stuff like that. And I didn't actually try one, but I had a buddy there that tried one, and he said it was actually really good. And uh, he did. <laughs> I did ask if uh, it was fresh or frozen. He said that he does freeze the elk when he's uh, at these events and things. That was the only time I saw him, just that event. Really nice guy. He seemed to be a really nice guy. So we were talking to him twice. The first time we were talking to him, basically it was that interaction I just told you about. Yeah, I mean, when we when we were talking, it was it was kind of just like, hey, so what are, what are you doing now? He said, you know, I'm retired. He's traveling, um, does his elk stuff. And, you know, he, he brought up the whole thing where uh, on the show as well, he was saying how he was classically, not classically trained, but he went, he was all over Europe and training and everything. And he, he dropped that again. He, uh drop that little factoid without being asked because you know we we're just sort of talking to me he's like yeah you know well i'm retired and you know because i've been all around europe and everything i've done it all i've been doing everything so i'm just retired and but um yeah the first interaction with him really nice and he he kept mentioning how he was the number one tv personality in ohio in the year 2012 or 2013 whenever the show was he brought that up a couple times and, um, you know, interaction went great. He went back to his station, he, his trailer, he was serving up elk. We went back to ours and uh, maybe like an hour later, he comes over to us uh, pretty plastered and he's just like talking, <laughs> talking Gordon Ramsay and kind of slurring his words a little bit. And again, I'm not trying to, I'm not saying anything that's untrue, but I, and I'm not trying to make the guy look bad. It's just what happened. He, he came over, <laughs> talking Gordon Ramsay and he was like kind of slurring his words a bit and he was saying yeah you know uh, that guy's a fucking asshole and you know how and every show they make you say sort of at the end because it's TV they kind of want you to say how he came in and helped you and blah 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 and how things are so much better now that he came he said but if you look that's that's you know I didn't do that at all that's the sort of thing he said I didn't do that sort of thing at all and, uh, you know, if you pay attention, that's, you know, sort of the only, I'm the only one who didn't do that. And he was kind of proud of that. And he also mentioned how he was sick on the show and actually going back, he did kind of look really pale on the show. And um, there's some moments where you can tell his, he is a bit under the weather because his voice is kind of, you know, how you kind of have that voice when you're congested and everything uh, that was going on with him. But another thing I really remember him uh, saying was when he was plastered, um, he was saying that, oh yeah, so he was, you know, I mean, he was getting into it with Gordon Ramsay quite a bit. You know, they were, they were having words back and forth. 
And I remember him saying that he was in the kitchen just with Gordon at his back and he wasn't even facing Gordon, but I believe uh, he said that there was a security guy. I mean, Gordon had security around, I guess, almost at all times um, from what Joe made it seem like. But um, they were standing, I guess, maybe five feet away from each other with a security guard nearby. And he was just saying out loud, not looking at Gordon, but with Gordon behind him. And he was just kind of saying it loudly, not yelling, but loud enough for Gordon to hear. He says, man, I really want to knock this guy the fuck out. And, you know, shit like that, just talking about Gordon as if he wasn't there, but loud enough so Gordon could fucking hear. And from what I and from what he said happened was. Nothing really happened, but um, the security guard would just kind of get closer to Gordon and kind of cut off the space between them, get in between them. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that answers all your questions there. And um, he, he he really was a nice guy, like just a, your pretty typical guy. He was not a jerk. I think, you know, Kitchen Nightmares is a TV show. It's a reality TV show. Sure, they edit things, but you can't edit certain things. And yeah, it's like on the show, Joe seemed like a difficult, kind of a difficult guy to get along with. And he was lying all over the place and kind of being an ass. And he said that, you know, they edited things to make him look bad. But, you know, you can't edit certain things, I think. But um, in person, seemed like a nice guy. You know, just talking to him for a little bit. Was a cool dude. So it sounds like Joe retired and is maybe just doing some food festivals in some areas as a hobby, I guess. It really cracks me up that he still mentions the fact that he was taught by European chefs. And that he was still talking shit about Gordon after all these years. As far as his claims about being the biggest celebrity in Ohio in 2012, I have no way to tell if that's true or not, but I have a feeling that he's more infamous than famous. But it sounds like he was at least nice to this Redditor. Maybe he's calmed down a little bit now that he's retired and out of the restaurant game, or maybe he's nice as long as you're not an employee of his. But either way, I think it's probably for the best that Mill Street Bistro is no longer in business. The food didn't seem to be particularly good based on customer feedback anyway, and it looked like a pretty miserable experience to be an employee working there. Again, I want to say a huge thank you to Real Estate Novelist for taking the time to answer my questions. Anyways, I guess that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.